So there are a handful of operators that one might use in their code. Um, if I just create some imaginary variables called a and b, uh, you might occasionally do something like if a or b, and that will return uh, true or false based on whether or not one of these are true. Uh, there are others, there are other operators, there's a and b. If you really want to show off, you could use uh, the uh, two of the caret sign, that'll be a exclusive or b. Uh, there's also a couple unary operators, there's a couple bitwise operators like um, bitwise negation, there's logical negation. And then of course there are the comparison operators, there's greater than, less than, equals. Uh, that's, a, that's a double equals, this is not JavaScript, there's not equals. These are the common operators you might use. There are other ones. Uh, there are other operators that you might use once in a while to do a, uh, a more specific task. And one of them was just sneaked into a Game Maker update, a Game Maker beta update uh, some time ago. I'm not exactly sure when it was added. Hey. And that is what you see on the screen in front of you, question mark, question mark, the null coalescence operator. So the null coalescence or nullish coalescence, whatever you want to call it, is a feature that is included in some other programming languages. I know off the top of my head C-sharp supports it, at least more recent versions of C-sharp. And what it does is if you have, uh, let's say A equals undefined, uh, let's give that a value. Let's say B is going to equal, let's give this an actual value. Let's make this, it can be anything. It can be a string. It can be a number. It can be a, it can be a struct or some more, some more complex data structure. Um, if you have A and B, and if you want to write some code that looks something like if a a is not equal to undefined, uh, let's say c equals a, else c equals b, uh, you could write this out in a somewhat more concise way using the conditional operator. You could say c equals, um, let's say a is not equal to undefined, question mark, a colon b. The null coalescence operator factors into this a few ways. If you wanted to see what this actually equals, you could say show message uh, c, and then you could see what c equals. Um, let me actually run the game. Alrighty then, so as the result of the uh, this first if-else statement, we can see that c equals uh, 1337. Uh, if I were to do the same thing for uh, down here, you could also see that c is going to equal 1337. Um, if I were to change the value of a from undefined to, I don't know, let's pick another number, a thousand, then you can see that c is going to equal a thousand. All right, if you've been programming for any length of time, I'm sure you've had to do this at least a couple of times. So what the null coalescence operator allows you to do is instead of going through this whole song and dance, uh, you can instead say c equals a question mark question mark b. And this will effectively um, be expanded by the Game Maker internal runtime into the stuff that I just deleted. It will effectively turn uh, this short C equals A question question B into, into this. And it provides a quick and dirty way to do things such as undefined checks such as this. Um, if I were to delete all this and, uh, and run the game, uh, we will see that C is going to equal 1337. All right, that's great. If I were to assign this an actual value, what did I give it before? 1,000, we can see that C is now going to equal that. Okay. So there is another aspect of the null coalescence operator, and that is that if I just get rid of all this other stuff, if I just set A equal to undefined, and then a question question equals, uh, let's give this a value 1337. That's everyone's favorite number. It's still like 2003, isn't it? God, that was almost 20 years ago. So I can run this code, uh, a question question equals 1337. If I were to show message the value of a and run the game, we are going to see that this has done more or less the same thing that we had before, the same thing that we had before with the null coalescence operator, and it's going to assign 1337 to it, uh, because this likewise is going to check if a is equal to undefined. If it is, it's going to assign it a new value. If it's not, it's just going to leave it with its old value. If I were to set a equal to something that isn't undefined, uh, we will see that instead A is equal to a thousand. So there are some specifics of the way that null coalescence work that you may want to be aware of. Um, it will only work if a value is undefined or if a value equals pointer null, which is something that you almost never come across in GameMaker. If you did not know that this existed prior to this, I would not blame you. Um, if, 
A is going to equal anything else, and that includes otherwise falsy values like zero or negative numbers in Game Maker. Null coalescence will not work, so I have A equal to pointer null, and we can see that the, uh, the null coalescence is happening here on line five. But if I were to set this to something like zero, uh, A is just going to be equal to zero. A is not going to be equal to, is not going to have its value reassigned, even though ordinarily zero is falsy. So this really does not account for what the rules for uh, truth and false values would otherwise be in Game Maker. Um, again, if I were to set this to negative one or something like that, it would still not be um, redefined. If I were to set it to some other falsy value like... Boy, what would other falsy values even be? Because as far as Game Maker is concerned, well, things like empty array or a string just doesn't have a truth value. That'll just crash. Anyway. So some other things that... Um, that may be interesting to know. Uh, this will short circuit both this and the long, the longer um, null coalescence expression will short circuit. I've talked about short circuiting slash lazy evaluation before. Um, if this code does not have to be evaluated, it will not be. And what that implies is that if you have a function, let's call it function, um, some function, yeah, some function. And this can just be defined as show message. Ah. If this function runs, it'll show message and return caps lock return um, some number. So if down here, if you have a question question equals some function, if a is equal to undefined, uh, some function will run. And we are going to see that before the, uh, before the message box with the result shows up, we're going to have just we're just gonna have the function screaming at us and then it's going to show us the answer. Uh, however, if I were to give this some other value that is not undefined or a null pointer, then this function will not run because it doesn't have to and, they, and Game Maker doesn't have to spend uh, CPU clock cycles evaluating that. So that's pretty nice. Uh, other operators in Game Maker work like this as well. If you have a, an and or an or, logical and or or, and the, uh, the result of a function call won't have an influence on the on the final result because if you're anting two values and the first one is already false or something like that uh, then this won't this won't run it's quite handy you can put your more computationally expensive code later in in the line and it won't be called if the um, if the game maker runtime knows that it won't matter and this also works for the uh, as I said this also works for the long version of the null coalescence operator if I were to say C equals a question question uh, some function, uh, right now, a already has a value, so we're just gonna we're just gonna see that assigned to c, and some function will not go ahead and scream at us. Uh, whereas, if I were to set a equal to undefined, uh, then then a will be undefined. It will coalesce, and the function will scream at us first. So that's pretty cool. So this is a feature that is mildly interesting. It doesn't add anything new to Game Maker that wasn't already here, but it does allow certain specific lines of code to be written in a more concise manner. And I have, I certainly have some uses for this. Uh, I've certainly changed a few lines of my code to use the, uh, the null coalescence operator instead of writing out the, like the if else undefined is checked a long way. Some of you out there may prefer not to do this uh, for the sake of code readability because uh, checking if a value is undefined with an if statement is a lot more um, immediately legible than something like this, especially if the person who's reading your code isn't familiar with the null coalescence operator. And that's a perfectly valid argument to not do this. But I like to make videos on the weird stuff you can find in Game Maker, and if this doesn't qualify it as weird, I don't know what does. Take it or leave it. That's all I really have to say about the null coalescence operator. It's really simple. Um, I guess it's worth just adding the standard disclaimer that this is a very early beta feature, so early that, as I said, it wasn't even mentioned in the, in the patch notes when it was hey. originally added. I'm actually not sure when it was originally added because someone just found it. So with that in mind, it's not impossible that there are still bugs in the way that this works. Um, I did find one when I was messing around earlier involving some what we'll call peculiarity, also known as crashes, in the way that it evaluates expressions containing things like array accessors and struct accessors and that sort of thing. But honestly, I'm, I'm hoping that that gets ironed out before I even have time to edit and post this video. As far as, I, as, far as I'm aware, that issue has been addressed. But we'll see. So that's it for me for today. Uh, no code this time. This is just one of those short computer science demonstration videos. Uh, no GitHub today. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. One tutorial tutorial like this and one let's make a tower defense game. Although if YoYo -Yo games keep sneaking new features like this into individual betas. 
in cases like that, I might just make extra videos whenever I discover something cool. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, there will be links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Emily Koyo, Posho, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.